Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is May 25th. Just want to give you a tour of the garden this far. These are my container tomatoes, mostly determinate tomatoes. And for the determinate varieties, you do want a bigger size pot, at least a five gallon container, because when they get to size, they're going to suck the life and water out of the containers. I really recommend about a seven gallon container. That's a seven gallon container. And if you want for comparison, that's a five gallon container. When you're growing, your plants in different size containers. They look great when they're small, but once they get to size, they're really gonna suck the nutrients out, they're gonna suck the water out. Nutrients you can keep up with a more frequent schedule, but if they just dry out one time, the plants are gonna be damaged. So really pick the right container for the size of your plant when it's mature. Another tip I have is you can go to your nurseries now. All of these geraniums were 99 cents because they were damaged and I've been nursing them back to health. You can't really beat that. For a dollar, for a plant this size, even though they were damaged, they're going to come back to life. That's my second wave of tomatoes. They're going to be going out in the garden this weekend. Those are my indeterminate varieties. Let's go over to the main area here. My container flowers are doing really well. And as we come down here, let's take a look at the pepper garden. I've been showing some of this damage in different videos. These are all from snails and slugs. So I've been taking care of that. The plant is going to recover. But in different parts of your garden, you might have different pests. You might have different disease. The snails and slugs like to live under my deck. So that's where um, I really concentrate some of the uh, sodium phosphates, what I'm using now for snails and slugs. But that looks pretty good. Kale is all been attacked by human beings. We've been eating it. The hops plants are getting massive. And that's on a 12 foot kind of trellis that I made. Let's come over to the last of my transplants. I've got my cucumbers and melons getting to a nice size in there. They're going to go out into different parts of the garden that are going to be cleared out or that um, I haven't put anything in yet and rather than start from seed I start them in there because it's easier for me to concentrate my energy to this little space Get all the cukes and melons going and then I just go and drop them into the garden the transplants of tomatoes peppers They're all good to go to my community plot good to give the rest away a lot of people say if you've got flowers in on Your transplants do you remove them and yes, I do remove them they just don't need to be there. Once they get into the ground, the, the plants are going to pick up speed. They're going to be doing well. They'll produce more flowers. Been harvesting peas out of here. The container peas will be dying back soon as the heat's starting to roll in. That's all kohl kohlrabi mixed down in there. The tiny Tims, the dwarf tomatoes are doing well. Been cutting this lettuce back. It keeps coming back, which is perfect. Cut and come again. Enjoying that. I am growing about 20 peppers in this vertical tower. I'll be doing a video on this. And this is a green stalk container. And I'll highlight what this is, how to fill it, how to take care of it. But before I do that, I always want to test out the products that I'm using in my garden. But it's looking pretty good. Another space in here. This was the trough filled with greens, lettuces. You can see all my construction stuff there on the left. More kale. That's the goji berry doing extremely well. The fig plant is just starting to set out some shoots. And for whatever reason, my grapevine didn't make it. I was hoping it was just late, but it did perfectly fine in a five gallon bucket through Maryland winters and it just died out. So I'm gonna replace that with something. A Couple of tomatoes in containers more greens and you can see when we talk about bolting that's spinach right there and you can see that it's bolting which means it sends up a flower stalk that's going to be flowers on the end it tries to go to seed and that happens with your cool weather vegetables soon as the warm weather comes they think about flowering producing seed and reproducing here's my composter see if i can do this left-handed and it's a hot composter I can feel actually it's warm. I don't know if you can see. Well, there you go. Some of the steam's coming out. It's humid here today. But it's nice and warm. 
compost is going well in about four to six weeks. I'll have plenty of compost for my raised beds and I'm going to keep doing that on a four to six week cycle this year. Let's move over here. All my containers that you see that I have plants in have holes in the bottom. That's why the root system is established in the ground. But this is a nice way to concentrate resources. If you have to get your plants off the ground for animals, insects, problems, whatever, it's a great way to do it. One of my bigger tomatoes, that tomato was in a hothouse tomato cage, so it got out here really, really early. Asparagus, you do let your asparagus go. Don't harvest everything or it won't have the energy to grow back stronger root systems and you won't get the spears that you want next year. But that's what asparagus looks like when it um, basically, uh, well, flowers. You can see the little yellow flowers. They're all going to become seeds and when the leaves come out. So when that spear turns into a plant, that's what it looks like. Got my onions in there, leeks, turnips, radishes. Going to be doing a whole video on this section today. I'm going to shoot how to grow beefsteak tomatoes uh, part two of five. These are the tomatoes that I'm challenging Cali Kim with. I'm going to select the strongest one and begin to take care of that. So come August 1st, um, I can beat her in the contest with the largest tomato. Garlic is looking good, still nice and green. Somewhere in mid-June, that will brown and I will be harvesting that. I'll spin around this way. You notice that I did mulch my beds. In some areas I'm mulching. I typically mulch every year, but I use um, a hardwood shredded mix. Cypress blend is fine. Plain old hardwood is fine, but I like the shredded mix because it locks together and really doesn't wash away. Three pepper plants. This is going to be cucumbers and peppers. More asparagus back there. It's a large cherry tomato. This is actually stevia. I've been trying to grow that from seed, but it's always a hassle so I just got that at Home Depot but it tastes just like stevia and you can use it in teas and stuff like that this is my perennial area I've been showing you you can see how quickly it starts really going once the warm weather comes and what I wanna probably the tip I want to stress the most I mean look at all the lush growth is now that we're approaching June that's when the diseases start rolling in you wanna be on a routine for spraying that could be um, spraying for pests, for diseases, whatever comes to your garden, mark down on a calendar when you're going to do it, when you're going to spray, and stick with it. You're going to have to spray somewhere between 7 and 14 days, depending on your temperatures, depending on the disease or different kind of insects that come in your area. But you just want to stay to a routine. And I can't stress enough, make sure you test spray any new sprays you bring to your garden because when you spray something and the temperatures are 80 degrees and cooler the leaves of the plants are a little bit stronger for best description really and they can hold more when it gets hot 85 90 95 degrees the leaves are a little bit weaker they kind of lose some of their leaf pressure they kind of wilt and if you hit them with the same spray you were using back when it was cooler you could possibly damage your plant. So always test spray, make notes, but things are going well. Let me just show you one more thing. Container potatoes, just keep them watered, five gallon container. These are going to be ready soon too, probably in about two to three weeks, but nice and green, doing well, a little bit of damage, but I've been staying up with my sprays, with my pest control, and things are going well. Oh, I lied. One more, one more thing. And this is really the whole garden. Still my kiwi plant that I can't get to flower after 10 years. This is going to have to get weeded. It's not mulched yet. But these are all the peppers that I'm growing in containers. Two peppers per container. Mostly two peppers per spot. It really works. I'm going to have a feeding today of soluble fertilizer. It's probably going to be a fish emulsion. Just a nice 311 fertilizer. And you can see peppers are suffering from those snails and slugs so the sodium phosphate will go down there and again keep up a routine of your pest control your disease control because if you stick to that and you do it preventatively start about two weeks before those pests and disease come to your area you'll have a much better garden you can't always stop the pest you can't always stop the diseases but you can get 
your plants growing longer, you can get more production, and you'll have a better experience. Thanks for watching. Please check out www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks.